Suppose we have a shared file or a shared database. There are two kinds of processes which can access this shared file, the reader process and the writer process. The reader process just read from this file. The writer process can read from the file and also update to this file. So if we do not synchronize these reader processes and writer processes properly, there are chances for data inconsistencies. To handle this reader-writer problem, if any writer is writing to this file, we should not allow any other writer process to write to the file. If any writer process is writing to this file, we should not allow any reader process to read from this file. Also, if any reader process is reading from the file, we should not allow any writer process to write to the file at that time. All these can lead to data inconsistency issues, but we can allow multiple readers to access the file or read from the file at the same time. It will not lead to any data inconsistency issue. So this is more or less a critical section problem where mutual exclusion should be ensured to some extent. So to handle the mutual exclusion, we can make use of a binary semaphore. We shall name the binary semaphore as WRT or write semaphore. To handle the mutual exclusion, we shall initialize this semaphore with the value 1. Then this semaphore will act as a lock for this shared file or a shared database. Now a writer process before writing to the file should procure this lock. After writing from the file, the lock can be released. Similarly, the reader process before reading from the file should procure this lock. If lock is obtained, it can read from the file while exiting the lock can be released. But this solution provides a complete or exclusive access for both the reader and the writer. If any writer is inside, no other writer is allowed to write. If any writer is inside, no reader is allowed to read. If any reader is inside, no writer is allowed to write. If any reader is inside, no other reader is allowed to read. This is not the requirement. The writer should have exclusive access to the shared file, but we can allow multiple readers to access the file at the same time. So here the problem with the solution is that the first reader, suppose the lock is free, if no writer is inside, the lock is free. Now the first reader who is trying to read from the file will procure this lock for itself and will start reading from the file. And the second reader onwards should wait for this lock. So to solve this problem, we can make the first reader procure the lock for all the readers. For that, we can make use of one variable named read count. This is a variable, not semaphore. We can initialize the variable read count with the value zero. Now a reader process before reading from the file should execute the entry section code. In the entry section code, the reader should first increment the read count. After incrementing, if the value of read count equals one, it means this is the first reader, then that first reader should procure the lock. If the lock is free, the first reader can procure the lock and can read from the file. And while exiting from read, the reader process should decrement the value read count. After decrementing if the value is zero, it means this is the last reader who is exiting. Then that last reader should release the lock. So the first reader should procure the lock for all the readers. Once all readers are, have exited, the last reader should release the lock. 
So this is the entry code and this is the exit code. Now we can see in the entry code and exit code, we are accessing a shared variable named read count. Multiple readers can access this shared variable read count at the same time. And again, it can lead to critical section problem. So this is a critical section. The entry code and exit code have become now a critical section. So to handle this critical section, we can make use of one more binary semaphore. We shall name that semaphore as mutex. In order to handle the mutual exclusion problem, we can initialize this semaphore with the value 1. Now a reader process before entering into the entry section code should procure this mutex lock and while exiting from the entry section code should release the mutex lock. Similarly, a reader process before entering into the exit section code should procure the mutex lock and while exiting from the exit code it should release the mutex lock. This will allow only one reader process to be inside this critical section at a time and only one reader process to be inside the exit code at a time. Now having the first reader procure the lock for all the readers and the last reader releasing the lock for all the readers, we shall see whether all these requirements are satisfied. Suppose a writer process needs to write to the file, it will procure the write log, decrement it to zero and will start writing to this file. By that time, if any other writer process needs to write to this file, it will also start procuring the write log, but the write log value is zero. It cannot procure the write log, so it cannot access the shared file. So if any writer is writing to the file, no other writer process is allowed to write to the file. Now check the second condition. Suppose one writer is writing to the file. The writer process has procured the write log. Write log value is decremented to zero and the writer is writing to the file. By that time, suppose one reader process needs to read from the file. That reader process will procure the mutex log. Now mutex is 1, it will be decremented to 0. Mutex log is procured. Read count is incremented. Read count value becomes 1, showing that this is the first reader. So the first reader should procure the write log. But now the write log value is 0, it cannot be procured. So the first reader will wait for the write log in the entry section code. So this reader has not exited the entry section code and hence the mutex log is not released. So by that time if the second reader suppose R2 tries to read from the file since the mutex lock is not released that reader should wait for the mutex lock without entering the entry section code. So R2 will be waiting to enter the entry section code. And by that time, if the next reader, R3, tries to read from the file, mutex is not free. So that reader should also wait for the mutex lock. And by that time, if the next reader, R4, tries to read from the file, it should also wait for the mutex lock for entering the entry section code. So if any writer is writing to the file, the first reader will be waiting for the write log and the following readers will be waiting for the mutex log for entering the entry section code. So all the readers will be waiting. If any writer is inside, no readers are allowed to read from the file at that time. So the second condition is also satisfied. Now check the third condition. Suppose one reader is reading from the file. The reader is reading from the file means the read. this is the first reader. It has procured the write log and is reading from the file. By that time, if any writer process tries to write to the file, the writer process will try to procure the write log. But now the write log value will be zero. It is with the first reader. So the writer is not allowed to write to the file. So if any reader is reading from the file, no writer process is allowed to write to the file. 
Now check the last requirement, whether multiple readers are allowed to read from the file at the same time. Suppose we have one reader who is inside, one reader, the first reader is reading from the file. So this is the first reader, so the write lock will be procured by this first reader. And the first reader has exited the end record, so the mutex lock will be released by him. So if a second reader needs to read from the file, he can procure the mutex lock and can increment the read count. Now read count value is not equal to 1, so the second reader need not wait for the write lock. The write lock is already procured by the first reader for him. So the second reader can release the mutex lock and can directly start reading from the file. And by that time, if a third reader needs to read from the file, mutex lock is already released by R2. So the third reader R3 can procure the lock, increment read count. Even now, the value is not equal to 1. This is not the first reader. So he can release the mutex lock and can start accessing the file. By this, we can allow multiple readers to read from the file at the same time. So the first reader procure the write lock for all the readers. Once the first reader has got the write lock, the mutex lock will be released by the first reader. Then one by one, all the readers can execute the entry code and can start accessing the file. And while exiting, we allow only one reader to be inside the exit code at a time. So one by one, the readers will execute the exit section code and will exit from the exit section code releasing the mutex. Finally, when read count becomes zero, it shows that this is the last reader. Then that last reader should release the write lock. Showing that now no readers are inside, no readers are now accessing the file. So if any writer process needs to write to the file, he can access the write lock and can start writing to the file. So all the four requirements are satisfied.